Let me explain a few more things about this experiment here. We didn't just plant this to see what grows. We also wanted to see what and how it grows. So I give you some details and one of those important details is will these plants shade themselves out or each other? For example, if you look here you see the big leaves of the polovnia tree and then you see the leaves of all the others. So here the tree is definitely at an advantage. However, in this case the tree might get shaded out. It might. It doesn't have to. It depends on how it manages to grow and angle the leaves. But as you can see the corn is already relatively tall and when the others also take off then the tree here might be at a disadvantage. In this case here it seems that the tree might be getting the upper hand. It seems to get ahead and put his own leaves on top of the other. This one here is a little bit yellowish and that means this tree is still suffering from the transplant shock but it is taller and so by the time it has recovered it will then make bigger leaves and they will be on top of the other leaves at least that's what I hope for. Here is another case but I have a feeling that this small tree is pushing upwards and makes sure that its leaves catch enough sunlight. So all in all this is a very interesting experiment and I come here daily to see because it goes so fast and I will keep you posted how each of these plants that are sitting here together and very dense is managing to come up and grow and dominate its place. Of course they will not be able to dominate um, at least not for now but this is basically the general tendency and later on it will be too cold for all of them so the trees will go dormant over winter and the other things will die off and next year we will have the Bermuda grass and the Palovnia trees and we will then seed again something underneath the trees, around the trees to repeat the game and that should help us to make soil here in this patch. So as we had everything that we needed we seized the opportunity and created ourselves a learning experience here to learn how a Miyawaki forest, same principle, is gonna work. That should teach us and give us some insight. The chive here has survived the summer and the little tree there to the left is making leaves so that is a very positive thing. The other branch is also green but there is no leaf yet maybe it will go up. This is from some cuttings that I made somewhere along the road from a tree that we don't have here. On the other hand the Tagasaste experiment is not going that well. There is one that is managing to grow. This one here. But in the other pots there were something which is why I placed them here in the front row but apparently they did not survive. Might be that the rain destroyed them or my way of watering. But I received another tool that should help me to try this indoors over winter where I have a lot more control and I can keep the sand moist in an easier way. So let's see, but at least this one looks like it wants to grow into a tall Tagasaste bush. It's not a tree, it's more a shrub. You haven't seen these ones here. They sit behind the yurt in, in earlier videos. They were blocked from view by the very same yurt. Because you see, there's the yurt and they sit here behind. They are a little bit smaller for any reason. 
they have received basically the same amount of water but something is different there then it is for these guys they are now going for two meters or they are already two meters so they are taller than me and i think i'm a meter 80 or so so according to information from provided by the supplier of these trees in the first year an expected growth is 2.4 meters so i think we are seeing that and the other thing that we can see is that amongst all these things around not only do we have some late bermuda grass coming up better late than never we also see all these volunteers here some of them i can recognize it's the same amaranth variety pigweed that we also have elsewhere and it is coming up here and there's also something that i cannot recognize but as you guys know i'm very bad at identifying plants but this must be another variety and then we have here a lot of bermuda grass that is growing tall this guy had some issues with water while the others were growing so it is lagging behind because of that so here i know the reason the leaves at the bottom are affected by the dog's urine but as the tree has a lot more on top that's not really an issue i have also looked up a little bit how this growth will continue so apparently they grow some one and a half two meters wide and then go up in the very same shape so this stack basically just uh, goes up and up and up and at some point one can then start pruning in order to get a clean stem if uh, you want to grow them for wood but then i'm not really sure if you have to or it's something that the tree regulates itself so we will see in here there's no intention to do anything so reading is one thing and making the experience is another and i very much like making the experience because then you know for sure what works in your situation i think that is a valuable thing to do now that we got the first rain we definitely need to finish a lot of things here in the compound one is filling up this trench or filling it back in order to bury that water pipe and you might hear the backhoe somewhere over there Angel is distributing straw bales to different places removing all this metal sheeting here is also one of the things because it has been attracting rodents and it should not be there anyway so we are doing a little bit of cleanup and Angel is alone basically while I do my IT work Juan is on vacation it's a three-week vacation um, for those who are not from Europe the regular paid time off in US terms or vacation is 30 days and that means 30 work days so that is uh, how it is and the employee either gets to take the time off or gets it paid and Juan decided to do something on his own and relax a little bit he also has a few sheep of his own so that's what he's doing but if there's something he would be here in a few minutes he lives in a nearby village and it takes him about 20 minutes to be here if there is anything but of course we try not to call him because it's his vacation time so Angel is trying to do a lot of things on his own and when I can I go out and help or document like I'm doing right now our blind mare Sakahawea is there 
in her enclosure. Here and there she feels lonely and then calls out. Once I answer, as a human, she comes down and is then fine. She cannot see, so she relies on sounds and smell. And right now the other horses are foraging elsewhere. But soon they will come and provide her company. They do this all the time. Here you have a different angle. There is one lone Palovnia tree here in the foreground. This is now the third time that we try to establish a tree here. And like the others in the background that were smaller, or that are smaller, this one also is. But over time, and if nothing bad happens like to the others before, they were kind of waterlogged, um, this one should evolve into a big tree. Um, we also need to remove this pile of um, stones here, of gravel, once we continue to do something with concrete, then this will disappear. And here I can tell you about another idea that came up lately. So now that we are step by step getting into autumn, we can plant some regular trees, some native trees, that are well suited to be planted in autumn or spring. The Palovnias you can only plant from May onwards, while it is hot. So the idea is, to put trees on both sides of this wall. What is missing is the fencing part. So this is the wall for the um, dock enclosure, which is that side here, of course, without the yurt in it. So there will be some, um, yeah, some fence here, some two meters high. And the idea is to place a mix of palovnias support, as a support species and fruit trees on both sides of that, with the exception of this box there, which is uh, like a raised bed for some vegetables or salad or something like that. And my hope is that once those trees are high enough or tall enough, they will then provide shade to that box. And while they grow, we can provide shade in a different way. And the idea is to plant these trees with the help of the excavator to loosen up this very compacted soil. We know that this works. And also mix in a combination of biochar and warm humus in order to give them a head start to provide a better environment for them. There is a local supplier, so local to Spain, where we bought biochar in a big bag, 400 kilo. And they also sell the combination of biochar and warm compost or warm hummus, like uh, depending on how you like to call it. So it's the casting from worms. And the dogs are in their enclosure. The sheep take advantage. They are so afraid of them. And use the opportunity and drink some water. They have figured out that there is a routine that the dogs will be locked away during the morning. And so this works for them. It is interesting to note that the green has taken over the color of the straw in quite some areas. Before the autumn is really there and the vetiver changes its color, we should probably cut down this vetiver, carry it over to the wannabe food forest and apply it there as much as much as we can. This one here is a Palovnia tomentosa. It's a different variety. This is more for ornamental purposes. And as it's a little bit yellowish in some places also, it has made some progress. They grow a lot slower than the other ones. I just opened the irrigation, thinking that maybe it needs a little bit more water. The soil here is non-disturbed, so to say. So it might well be that it just that the rain just ran off and did not really penetrate. So let's provide some rain. And these Palovnia CMB one. 
they are coming along. Now this one there is the tallest and it's also quite interesting because the lower part looks different than the top part. So they managed to survive and let's see how it goes this time with the cold wind that usually comes from over there. We are distributing the store belts or angeles in order to prepare the last round of straw grazing before hopefully this place turns green again. The vetiver here that sits in the path of the wind is already changing the color. So I have a feeling we want to start the cutting very very soon because that is the autumn color, this purple color. And now that I'm standing here, I can show you the neighbor's land. So that is the land of the absent landowner where there was a tenant and it appears that the tenant is now gone. I have no word, no confirmation, it's not my business either. But as we can see what's going on here, these people have not showing up in about two months since they took their animals out. So might be that the rightful owner has now taken back his land. And who knows? Maybe he is willing to approach us soon to have a conversation. We mentioned a few times that we could help to restore this land as well. But it remains to be seen what his plans are. It would definitely be very nice. This is some 130 hectares to give it some love and do similar things like we do on our own land. But then of course um, it remains to be seen what the intentions of the owner are. We just came up here to check on these trees and it looks very very good. They not only have recovered, they also have grown quite tall. And now that Angel is walking there you can see how big they really are. So the one there to the right is definitely way taller than Angel is. And the others there where he's standing, they sit below his position. So that's very, very good. And if I go a little bit down here and show you the area there towards the back, they all look very good. And there's also one that is very, very tall. You'll see it in a second when we go up there. I'm not completely sure what that is. One idea was that it might be Sudan grass, but who knows? It has been here while this was wet and it continues to grow. We let it. There is no reason to do anything to it. And let's see what comes out of it. The Sudan grass that we seeded over here, this is all gone. This is now all dry completely. But we'll see what that is.
This one here was attacked by some animals and it is starting over from below. It might be that it will also regrow from the branches that are still there. But that's then probably something for springtime. But it's definitely not that, so that's a very good thing. So it appears that we definitely have some Sudan grass here in the trench. And this one is even making seeds on the top. So we do have some seeds here. Well, if it, call, if it likes to grow in the trench, then why not? At least we can make sure who gets to eat it when and when everybody needs to be out because of the toxicity. And even this one, which we thought were dead, is coming back. So these plants are very hard to kill, which is very good. And I also read that in some places they get, out, get cut down to the ground for harvest and the next year they will then come back. So aggressive pruning and we might want to do this right here as well going forward. They know the routine and they are moving and they are coming and lining up because they know that now they will receive their supplemental feed which is sweet. And that is why they are so eager for it. And by the way, this one is 5536 with the blind eye and apparently the other eye is good. But yes, yeah, that also happens. That is the packing order. But you definitely can see. So here we have the bull who also wants to give an opinion. And there is the sack. And now the show begins. And as you can see, this is not hot. This still needs to be done, but the ground is not conducive anyway, so there is not much we can do at the moment. Feet is the best fence. And there have been quite a few over there where that calf just came from, but they managed to get over here. So we are complete, we can distribute the supplemental feed only here in this part of this three-part paddock. The pigs started to scream, they will get their ration in a moment. They will be next, so one more sack here for the cows and the two bulls and then the pigs will also get the ration and also all this moving around is very good for the ground for the soil because their hooves they loosen it up so that when the rain comes more water can infiltrate that is why mother nature created the hooves in the way they are And as you can see, we do this deliberately so that there's more movement.
let's turn on the water so that they also use the feet better so here is the hose and now I need two hands and then we can give them a bath and also wet the feet for better digestion they like this and at the same time it makes it a little bit easier to put some order to the operation pigs are smart you can educate them and you might do this step by step just by establishing certain routines and then handling is a lot easier at the very end you can train a pig like it were a dog there are some cases where people have done this but of course this won't work if you kill them with 15 months so you have to keep them around for much, much longer so that it actually works out regardless whether you want to eat them or just have them there is a reason for doing that so I'm not talking about vegan or anything else which might uh, some people might expect now or believe or suspect so that's not the purpose it's just about why do you keep animals for what purpose they have a function in the ecosystem one is to provide food for others that's the way of life but you can also keep them around for the other functions like loosening up the soil providing fertilizer or many other reasons They go for a drink. That idea of natural weaning has also turned out very good. So he did not separate anyone. It just happens in a natural way. And the small ones are eating straw and also the supplemental feed. So they have transitioned from milk to solid and step by step the mothers will be dry because the calf is not interested in milk anymore. So that definitely is a way that works and all what is written and what people tell that you have to wean and all this turns out this is not for the benefit of the animal but for the economical benefit of the owner which is understandable I have no issue with that but as our purpose here is to grow that herd and use it for land restoration we have another context so natural weaning saves a lot of labor and also stress to the animal especially and there's really no reason to do it because it works out just the way as in a natural herd in a natural environment so the closer we are to what nature originally intended, meaning what evolved during the evolution, the more we simulate that or mimic it, the better it is. So with the new calves that are certainly already in there, we will do the very same. Just let them be. <laughs> 